What's happening, everyone? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Hope everyone's doing well. I know it's been a while, but we finally have some more hidden gem recommendations for you guys, so let's get into it. Before we start getting too crazy, guys, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. This is what we do regularly. Um, if it's not Matt posting some overviews or some sweet new hauls, um, hopefully I can get to do some of those soon, too. Um, I'm trying to do as many of these top fives and, and best ofs and whatnot. Um, so be, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so YouTube will let you know whenever we post a new video or go live. Um, and be sure to check out our Patreon if you're interested in hardcover comic giveaways. None of these will be, unfortunately, given away, but... Um, I'm going to tell you guys about five comic series that uh, none of which will come from the big two. Um, I've been doing this. There are three other parts you can watch if you're interested in 15 other titles. Um, so these do not come from the big two Marvel or DC comics. These are from the smaller publishers that I adore. Um, I absolutely love some of the stories coming out of here. And these are great little palette cleansers in between your big two runs. We all love the big two and we all read the superhero comics, but sometimes you want to change the pace a little bit. Um, and with these short stories, it's a great way to do it. So uh, the first one I wanted to talk to you guys about is called Rover Red Charlie. This is written by Garth Ennis with artwork by Michael DePascal. Published by Avatar Press, it was a six-issue miniseries where the main characters are three dogs, uh, Charlie, Rover, and Red. They all come from different backgrounds. They all had different owners. They all have uh, their own certain flavor based on their experiences. Um, it, it's really, really great. Essentially what's happened is uh, these dogs are experiencing the end of the world around them. Human beings have uh, lost their minds for uh, whatever reason, don't want to spoil anything, and um, they're basically either killing themselves or killing other people. Um, and it gets very, very aggressive. While this, uh, the main trio of characters is incredibly cute and adorable and great, the world around them is very graphic and very brutal, so this is definitely a title for adult readers. Um, Charlie comes, uh, he, he used to have, his owner was a blind man that he was obviously the seeing uh, eye dog for. And it's great to see, uh, again, it's not just as simple as uh, dogs, you know, talking to each other. Um, they use great little terms like feeder um, when they're talking about, you know, their owners, or they'll talk about the big splash when they're talking about a river or, or a body of water. It's so cool. Uh, it's really great the way Garth Ennis plays with the idea of these dogs. You've got Red, who's kind of, uh, he, he's the athletic one of the group. He's the jock of the group. And then you've got Rover, who actually comes from ac across the big splash. Uh, and he's from, he's from England, and uh, he's got a great accent. Uh, and the way he talks is also influenced by his origins. It's so good. It's so great. They go through incredible things together, these three characters. Um, like I said, that they're a beacon of light within this crazy world where things are falling apart at the wayside. And it's really great to see, again, their perspective and the experiences that they go through. Um, and sort of imagine what dogs would, you know, think about. It's a fun little thought experiment. It's a great little read. Six issues, you're getting an entire storyline. Um, and Garth Ennis, it's, it's a great payoff. It's one of uh, his best stories, in my opinion. And Garth Ennis has crushed it for many, many, many years. So I highly recommend checking out Rover Red Charlie. The next book is uh, another Valiant Comics title. You guys know I keep pushing the Valiant on you. I love Valiant Comics. And um, Psylords is no exception. Psylords, I know it sounds very super heroic, but it's, uh, it's a sci-fi story about these four characters that all wake up in a prison uh, with a voice in their head. And this voice in their head is telling them they're, uh, they are essentially gods and that they can do X, Y, Z, or K. Z for you Americans out there. Um, it's really, really, really cool. And you get to see these four characters, um, you know, start to learn about their abilities, start to remember things that had happened, how they had gotten to the position they're in. Um, they start to explore the world around them and you get introduced to the Star Wardens and the, and, and the creatures that inhabit this, uh, this prison, essentially. And the reason it's a prison is because it has an incredible gravitational pull and it's pulled in all these uh, ships and whatnot that have been passing by. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of it because there's, uh, a men there are many, many, many layers to this storyline. Um, it's written by Fred Van Lente with artwork by Renato Guidas. It's an eight-issue miniseries, so you're getting uh, a pretty, it's a pretty length, you know, it's a decent miniseries, and you're getting a, a self-contained storyline that does not really intersect with the rest of the Valiant universe. If it does, I apologize, I missed a detail, you guys are going to let me know, I'm sure, but um, it's really, really great. I love Renato Guidas' artwork. I hope I'm saying that last name right, I'm probably not, but uh, his artwork is phenomenal. 
Um, beautiful, beautiful paintings. And uh, the characters are great because you get to see, a I don't want to spoil too much, you get to see their powers evolve as they start to explore this world, uh, the relationships between the, the team members and wh what they've been through and what they're going to go through. It's really, really great. Fred Van Lente always uh, takes on these challenging and interesting sci-fi concepts, and he nails it. He's really great. He did an awesome job with Ivar the Time Walker over at Valiant Comics and, of course, Archer and Armstrong. Um, I highly recommend checking out Psy Lords, uh, a great eight-issue miniseries if you're a sci-fi fan, uh, space cosmic fan. It's a must-read for you. Always going to represent my main man, Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire, even though you know he does so much work for the big two in Image Comics, he still puts out OGNs um, every other year or so. Uh, and, and this is one of them. It's Roughneck, written and drawn by Jeff Lemire. Everything's done by him. It is the story of a character named Derek Ouet, Ouet, it's a French last name. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, probably not, though, again. But it's about, uh, he, he was an ex-hockey player, and really he was more of a thug uh, within the game of hockey. So that means he was a bruiser. He was the one who would get into fights and get the team riled up. Um, and now he's dealing with sort of, obviously, retirement from his career and being uh, part of, you know, a, a smaller community uh, further up north in Canada. And, and his, his long-lost sister shows up. Um, and she's being chased by by a, a, a pretty pretty crazy ex-boyfriend. And, um, you know, Derek's got problems of his own. He's, a, he's an alcoholic. All these things, right? I don't want to spoil too much again. I don't want to give too much of it away. It's, uh, again, a, a beautiful Jeff Lemire book looking at um, people, looking at personalities, interactions between people, seeing the, the breakdown of a star, a hockey star, someone who felt a purpose and felt important, who has now lost it and is regaining it through family. It's beautiful. It's what Jeff Lemire does best. I love his com his superhero work. I love his horror work like Gideon Falls. But my favorite things that he's done are titles like Family Tree, which is currently ongoing, um, Roughneck, Sweet Tooth, where you're getting these very deep and meaningful personal relationships between characters because those are the easy you can easily reflect those on your own life and really reconsider how you view relationships it's great it's absolutely well beautifully done i love i'm a fan of jeff lemire's artwork so i didn't mind it um it does very well suit the story in this little small town uh vibe that it's got going on sort of like essex county if you've read that um if you're a fan of essex county you're gonna love roughneck um, so I highly recommend checking this out if you're looking for something different, something to slow down the pace a little bit and get to a more human, personal, emotional level. I highly recommend checking out Roughneck by Jeff Lemire. Seems to be a pattern that every book I talk about in these Hidden Gem videos is from a different publisher. Uh, God Shaper, Simon Spurrier, Jason Goonface, a six issue. Is it six or five? I forget. It's five or six issues. Boom Studios published it. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful story. I I love God Shaper. Oh, it's always tough for me. Every Spurrier book I read, it it climbs to the top of my Spurrier uh, ranking list. God Shaper is fantastic. It follows a character named Any and his uh, and his little companion named Buddy. Um, so essentially in this world, in the year 1958, physics stopped working. But what happened is people um, wound up getting these personal gods. So they have a little godling. Um, it, the godling is powered by your faith, but it's also powered by um, these sort of this currency that you can exchange between people. And so the way people now, uh, the way commerce works is through through these these coins, through these gods, right? And the more coins your god ha your god has, the more powerful he gets. You can have him modified. And that's where... Uh, God Shaper comes in the title God Shaper. So a God Shaper is a character, uh, a personality within this universe that does not have a God of their own. And so they have the ability, however, to shape and modify and reconfigure other people's gods. Um, very, very cool. The other thing is gods cannot exist without belief. So if uh, as soon as an owner uh, of a god dies, within days that other god will perish. And there is so much more depth and richness to this universe. I've said it before, Simon Spurrier builds uh, some of the most complex uh, and beautiful worlds, so much depth and richness. He writes some of the most compelling and realistic dialogue. Um, the w I mean, the way the words are spelt, it's, it, you know, it makes a huge difference. It adds so much um, personality and, and culture to the book and the world that he's writing. Um, and, and again, he takes these crazy, crazy ideas and rationalizes them makes them incredibly and undeniably compelling 
and uh, he always gets paired with these experimental but stunning artists. Jason Goonface is no exception to that at all. I love his one-page splashes. I love his uh, p two-page spreads that flow from one to the other. Um, there is a lot of uh, exploration of discrimination within this book. Um, and looking at, again, characters that are, you know, no goddies as they call them. Uh, <laughs> if you're a god shaper, you're a no goddie. Uh, <laughs> it's cool, man. It's really, really cool. Again, Simon Spurrier is taking these, you know, even controversial subjects and ideas and making them incredibly compelling and, and being able to write and craft a story around these ideas that is, um, it's just beautiful. And it, it reads so well. I, I, I can't recommend God Shaper enough. Really fantastic work by Simon Spurrier and Jason Goonface. The last title I wanted to talk about, little bit of an oldie, it is The Wake by Scott Snyder and Sean Murphy. Two incredible creators, um, Scott Snyder, many of you probably know from Justice League, Batman, uh, Dark Knight's Metal and upcoming Death Metal event. Um, done a whole bunch of stuff for DC, a whole bunch of creator-owned titles for Vertigo and a, a handful for Image like 80 After Death and uh, Witches. Um, and Sean Murphy is uh, a powerhouse of an artist, having recently done Batman White Knight um, and, and the sequel to that as well with, with plenty of other titles. Joe the Barbarian is probably still one of his best works in my opinion. But The Wake is a storyline about a, uh, a very interesting idea uh, that uh, in evolves, uh, involves evolution. Um, but again, I don't want to spoil too much. It takes place in two timelines. In one of the timelines, uh, it's sort of set in the future um, after specific events where you follow this character named Leeward. And then in the past, you follow Dr. Lee Archer, who uh, was, was part of uh, basically the starting event for what leads into the, the, the life that is uh, Leeward's story. And so um, basically what happens is Dr. Lee Archer is recruited to investigate this very bizarre s uh, aquatic sound. Um, she's a, a, a marine, I forget what it is, biologist, something along those lines. I apologize, guys. But um, that's, you know, she, she's very gifted in terms of marine life and specifically whales and, and whale language and communication. And, uh, and this sound that they found is, like, uh, is unlike anything they've ever heard before. And it turns out they've actually found a new creature, a new aquatic creature. Um, it's a very deadly creature. It's a very powerful creature. And, uh, and things start to spiral from there. Things go horribly wrong. And, um, and, you know, you end up jumping, you know, the first uh, handful of the first half of the story, basically, you follow Dr. Lee Archer with little bits and pieces of the future. And then uh, afterwards, you basically jump into the future, full swing, and you get to see again, this sort of uh, the same way Scott Snyder's doing with Undiscovered Country. Now you get to see this sort of um, world that's built again after these crazy events so you have uh people who you know live exclusively in the sky you have people who have you know learned to live with the with the water situation and have built barriers around themselves to protect themselves uh very very interesting and you start to see again sort of the humanity fighting its way back to survival and sean murphy's artwork is beautiful unfortunately there was only ever a standard hardcover release like this kind of a bummer i don't know why sean murphy hasn't gotten an absolute edition love yet uh, from Vertigo, but hopefully, hopefully someday soon we see something. Um, I really, 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 really recommend this book. I like Scott Snyder's creator-owned work a lot, and The Wake is a really cool experiment that does involve a very fun idea um, that has sort of been disproven in terms of evolution, but um, I love the way it's played out here. It definitely plays to my heartstrings, this, and the Sean Murphy artwork is out of this world. There it is, another five titles for you from various publishers, various genres, various creators, Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't already um, for more videos like this, more recommendation videos, more opinion videos, more overviews and hauls and live streams. Hit the notification bell. YouTube's going to let you know whenever we post a new video. But um, I wanted to thank you guys all very much for tuning in. I hope everyone is staying safe um, and, you know, staying together and unified at a time like this. Um, you know, it, it's time. it's time for us all to... Uh, you know, take what we read about in comic books with justice and, and doing the right thing um, and making sure that we do it. Till next time, this is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. You stay classy, Internet.